So here's the bomb calorimeter. Um, let's start with the bomb part of the bomb calorimeter. Okay? Plus a little cautionary on how you open and close it. So first of all, the bomb has a little, uh, the lid to the calorimeter part has a little release thingy right here. And you pull this up, you pull out the little knob, and you push it up and it lifts everything. And then the next step is you pull this one out and you lift this. Okay? Okay, that gets step out of the way so when you swing it over, we're all good, right? So what happens if you don't do that is you bang things against the side, you know? And then the last semester, somebody broke a $250 thermometer, which was fun. But I replaced it with a $300 thermometer, <laughs> which is steel. It has a steel probe that is actually quite has a computer recording option, which I'm going to try to sell you guys. Okay. Awesome. So now, inside the calorimeter part is um, there's some wires, right? And then there's a bucket. It's quite heavy because the bucket contains inside of it a. base for the bomb. You put it in the base and you tighten this little guy here, right? You don't have to tighten it a lot, just a bit. Just maybe more than that. And then you can take the lid off the bomb. Yeah. It's a, you know, a stainless steel thing, so you can, it can develop a lot of pressure. In the Is it going to be hot? Actually, it's pretty, it's pretty tame, okay. despite the name. Well, I mean, when you use it, though, will it get really hot? Like, um, you know, if, if it weren't in the water bath, it probably would. But a water bath? it's going to be in a big old bath of water. Okay. It's oh. A thermal bath. Then it's going to so measure the change in heat in the water. Measure right. the change in temperature, and then. So what's uh, the volume of the bath? It's one liter. The or? volume of the bath is actually dictated by the volume of in, in one charge of this vessel, which is per nearly exactly two liters. So I really didn't know that. Well, actually, you don't. I don't. Because you're going to calibrate. You're going to calibrate the whole thing to uh, benzoic acid, which has a known enthalpy of combustion. Okay. And so we'll, we'll use a calibrant. And then um, uh, we use the known enthalpy to calibrate the amount of heat that it takes to raise the temperature of this water one degree. Okay, cool. So now, this guy right here, here's the back to the bomb. Here's the bomb interior, right? And you can see inside it's just an empty stainless steel vessel. And then here's the um, here's the part where you actually put the sample, right? And um, here's a, a, a cup and you can see you, when you when you make your sample you weigh it out, you put it into that cup. Right? And then um, you know honestly there's a little pellet press. But I don't think it's crucial that you even use it. You can you could probably just fill this put put this cup on the balance and put your sample in. That's probably good. And then the trick is that when um, when this is in the um, uh, in the bomb ready to go, it has a fuse connecting these two electrodes, right? And these two electrodes go out to here. And then when you're when it's all ready and the temperature stable, you fire this fuse. The fuse burns and that ignites everything in the bomb all in this closed container, everything burns, and then the enthalpy of that burning process gets transferred to water. And then the way to, the way to, this is probably the, the worst part of this whole experiment is, is that occasionally the, the, um, the fuse does not burn. Like you push the button and you wait and the temperature does a whole lot of that. Right? So the trick to getting this to work is roughly the fall. You get yourself some fuse wire, you can cut it with the scissors, and you're gonna have to weigh this out, right? You're gonna weigh it before and after. Uh, because the ends of it probably aren't gonna burn. So there's your little uh, your fuse wire. 
and then I think that, that the key is to get a good electrical connection for your fuse wire. And this seems to be the tricky part. So you can see here you just thread the fuse wire through here. And then I say just wrap it around a couple times there. And we're trying to make as good a contact as we can between the wire and the rod. We'll just thread this guy up here a little bit. Back down. We're going to try to get it to sort of loop over there, right? And then we'll go through this hole. And see if I can do this. Let's make her inside. Sort of scope this out in terms of length. It actually looks pretty good right there. Gives it a chance to sort of poke into the into the um, you know into here. Okay. It's gonna be in contact with the stuff there. Maybe a little shorter. And I'm just gonna wind this around here. Just like on the other one. Push that guy over. Perfect. So now, now we can charge this up with material, and this will be in here. I don't think I'm going to run through the whole shebang today, um, but just to get you guys ready. And we would put our sample in there, and then the idea then being that you can kind of um, loop the wire down in.